What up, what up, everybody? It's your boy Perez Kapure, aka Soul Boy, and welcome to D Mix, a conversation with Masango Edi on the occasion of his first ever studio compilation, a 10 track LP titled Engele Nepo, a sour phrase that translates to wait for it in English. Set to drop on the 21st of January 2022. Yes, sir. How are you doing, my brother? I'm great. <laughs> You're welcome to D Mix, and we are going to have an exciting conversation. First thing I want to know is what was the intention when you started making music? You know, was it uh, an incident or a couple of incidents that drove you to that decision? Yeah, amazing question. Um, there wasn't really any thought process. Like, like my dad used to have Fruit Loops on his computer. The worst. I saw Fruit Loops the first time. I was like, shit, what's this? How old, how, how old were you then? I, I don't know, bro. I was really young. I was, I was, I don't know, if fifteen or fourteen. Mm -hmm. I, was thinking, I, was really young. I was back in. Um, we're talking in 20, 2006, it's those, those times, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I saw Fruit Loops and I was, I was intrigued by how the thing worked because they would just put some, you know, put steps on it. It produced the sound. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what the heck is this thing? I need to try it. I need to really. Um, it was intriguing. I, I like things that interest me differently. Mm. So I asked my dad. He wasn't really responsive. He was like, he stopped that he needed to work. I was like, alright, cool. No, so he was a producer too. My dad he was an artist. He was, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. he, was, he was a reggae artist. Mm. Yeah, 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 guys, uh, nah, nah, free boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, coincidentally, my uncle had a studio at the same time. Mm -hmm. The Cobra House. Okay, so I went there. I, I mean, when our family house, I used to always go there and you know, see my aunties and see my cousins and we talk. You know. mm -hmm. uh, one day, all of a sudden, I saw guys, a bunch of guys. I was like, I was, was what are these guys? They said, No, you all from the studio not long ago. Mm -hmm. And these guys come here every day and they make noise and they go back. I walk in and I see the same software. I'm like, Okay, what's this thing? You know, it's interesting. I see how people start doing music and how people start rapping. And it was I was interested by how it worked because I've always had a thing for music. Mm -hmm. I used to write um, back in the day when my friends could not afford sample session mm -hmm. to read the lyrics of songs. They would pay me fifty francs to write them, to just listen to a song mm -hmm. and write the lyrics. Mm -hmm. So I used to when like when TI came out, people could not really understand what he was saying because it was fast. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, my friends used to pay me to hear what he was saying. Mm -hmm. right. exactly. so, yeah. so all of those things happened simultaneously. The same, you know, period of time, same place, everything was just happening. You know, it's like the, the universe was, you know, building things to happen at that time. And then I found myself going to the studio every day. I was going to the studio, studio every single day, watching what was happening, trying to make my own beats before I even understood what was music. So, rating the 808 back in 2015, with you know, all the artists we know were under that kind of beat, was it like uh, you tapping into their energy or was it your ever wanting desire to you know, look at new talents and develop them? What was it in general? Um, I have this thing, I'm a loner who doesn't like to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm a loner who sometimes, especially when he has to do art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always had the, the passion and drive to work with people, you know, just seeing or understanding how they, 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 they feel about music and how they see music, look at music from a different perspective, from a different angle, through somebody else's vantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've always had that knack to, to develop people, you know, like if I see someone booming or if I see someone, um, any any young kid, I would, I would say, for example, when I heard uh, this, this kid, Manic, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, okay, I need to, get, I need to get her beats. I need to. So I've always had that, you know, that urge to want to work with people. Mm -hmm. So when when um, Crispy and I fell out from the label that we got signed in, um, I think it was twenty fourteen, mm -hmm. we had to come up with something that was our own, you know, something that we could control. And that was the same year I met Pine. Who happens to be my cousin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we were like, all right, let's do something that's ours, you know, something that we can have control over, something that is more like a collaboration mm -hmm. than just signing people and, and saying, okay, you do this, do this. Like, okay, what do you have to bring on the plate, and what this is what I have to bring on the plate. And together, we can make something big and you know get to a certain level. So it was more of um, we used to look at it as like a developing agency. So mm -hmm. we could develop an artist and then some people would now could come and assign them 
like how uh, we had Ricky Maria, we developed Ricky Maria for some time. Mm -hmm. She got signed for 1012, we developed Nabila for some time, she got signed to Ren. Mm -hmm. um, Gomez, same thing, we did same with Gomez for some time as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was already like a full made artist, but he passed through us throughout, uh, through a certain time. We had to and why, why, why decide to name? 808, the, like the Roland TR 808 drum beats and the drum yeah. beat. Why, why? It's, it, I used to like using the 808s a lot, mm -hmm. but it came mostly not because of the 808s I used to use. Mm -hmm. It's more of the penal code because mm -hmm. it was like disturbing the piece. It went yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I was always seeing the vision like, okay, I want to disturb a piece of people. How do you disturb people in music? Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, 808 Nation, this bunch of guys are coming to disturb. You know, coming through with that fish energy mm -hmm. in this recipe. Mm -hmm. So you know, that was that was why we named it Aero Nation at that time. There is a set of music maker with whom you're close, you know, and you mentioned almost the same era. You know, I'm talking about formidable names like DJ Kahal, Big Bola, Salatia. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, just to name a few. Tell me about your relationship with these guys from then and even now. Man, this, this these guys are. Uh, I would say they're like, they're like my heroes or they're like people I look up to. Yeah, even outside the fact that they're my colleagues or, you know, but they're like people I look up to. Um, I remember there was a time when um, I didn't have a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't have a house. I was still looking for a house. I still needed a place to be at. And then Carl they had me stay at his house for a while. For a really long while, I used his equipment. I did, you know, I was in his place, no pressure or nothing. And then he stopped me way too much or a lot of stuff, I would say, over the years. I mean, I started mixing and mastering properly well because, you know, I was watching Carl mix and master. I was like, okay, you can do this? I, I thought we were just beat makers, bro. I didn't know, I didn't know we had to mix and master and do all of that. But, you know, um, walking into Carl's room and he was doing all of those things. At that time, I was like, shish. And, you know, going back in the day when he was in Yamdi with, um, uh, Tirajai and the other guys. Banye, Banye, so, yeah. and Banye. I used to always look up. I used to always look up to them. Like, okay, I need to be like this guy. Because, because them not started before I came to. We, we, I just like my name. I became somebody or anybody that they knew, like 2013, 2012. Mm -hmm. But before then, the, them lot were already putting out stuff, and people already knew them. So I was like, okay, who's this DJ Car guy? Mm -hmm. And I remember one time in. Uh, 2013, I had to beg him for a beat because I was trying to sing, you know. He gave me a beat that he would neglect. Um, I don't know where that song is. But, you know. <laughs> Shout out to the boys, too. Shout out to the boys. So, um, Salatiel Singh. Salatiel, um, he's been a, a mentor, he's been a big brother, he's been a, he's been a brother for you know, as long as I can remember. I met him in 2015, mm -hmm. and um, since then, he's been somewhere that he In and out of the studio. In and out of the studio. Always in and out of the studio. More out of the studio than even in the studio. Mm -hmm. I remember one time um, I lost my equipment mm -hmm. and I'm always running into issues. <laughs> I always run into some problems every now and then. So I lost my equipment, so I just got locked up and then I left. Um, and then he gave me a new, a brand new sound card that he brought from Germany. He was wow. like, right, take these and go start your life. Jesus shit. Shout out to Hyman General. So yeah, he's that's why one of the reasons why I always roll people like that. The baller, with, with, we, we were in Sound Slave 2013, mm -hmm. you know, 2012, you know, known him for a minute and he's always coming through and then he came to And he was gonna give Sean Sean yeah, records as he gave that yeah. show. Yes, exactly. So he's he's been a brother too. So this that's why I always go back and forth with the same people. So you have your, your your same crowd around you for a bit now. Yeah, yeah, same that's people. amazing. Yeah. As a songwriter and producer, you have worked with a long list of artists, both known and unknown. What are the remarkable moments or the challenges you faced so far in your career as, as a producer, a beat maker? Um, the challenges I face most of the time is it has to do with songwriting. Okay. Yeah, production. Not so much because I struggle to stay on my name. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what I can do as a producer. Mm -hmm. And I know exactly what I cannot do yet. Mm -hmm. So I struggle to stay on my name. So I don't really have too much trouble on that aspect. But the the remarkable moments I would say mm -hmm. is when I'm right when I have to write for someone. Because 
the irony is I'm, I'm used to writing for females, I'm used to writing for, for girls. Right? I could write the song way better for a girl than I would a guy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's funny, right? Yeah, it's funny. So, um, most of the times when I have to write for, for a dude, I have to, there's so much that has to go on because especially if, if you and the person don't have like a, a, a communicative relationship. Because or that bond. Yeah, that bond. Because writing for somebody entails you you know getting into their minds or seeing things from their perspective mm -hmm. yeah so sometimes it's really difficult to get to do that i remember one time this guy asked me for a song and i kept sending him some very as he would call them laid back lyrics <laughs> <laughs> because him and i we, we were not really having a conversation like that so i, I didn't know his experience mm -hmm. i didn't know where he was from or anything so when i told him i was like okay i'm not really that comfortable because you always just it's when it's strictly business, mm -hmm. and my production side can come in. When it's strictly business, I can't be a composer. Mm -hmm. When it's strictly business, I hear you don't really song. I need to know what's up, what kind of song you know, what is in your head, mm -hmm. what are you trying to put out, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's kind of difficult. And one of the very, very difficult things too is when you're writing a song for someone, be it a male or a female, mm -hmm. and then they cannot really enter the, the spirit of that song. Yeah. Because it's like a body of work, it's like this bottle. So you create that they, they have to come in and feel it. But most of the time some people are just you know just hovering mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. and it gets frustrating sometimes. No, they don't have the thing themselves. Yeah, so but sometimes you have to understand that people come with their different personalities in themselves no matter who writes them. Going to Douala in twenty eighteen, being a father on the rush that we know the city, you know, dearly yeah. has uh, and his ability to affect people's settlement into the city. Tell me a little bit what all that period played in your musical career and your person in general. Um, but to be honest, those, those were not the best moments. Yeah, yeah. Um, it played a good role, but it played more of a down role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because me, me moving to, to Douala, had his, his good side mm -hmm. but then i got to do at one point i lost focus i lost touch with purpose mm -hmm. why i moved there why i started making music mm -hmm. and all of that mm -hmm. so it was it was not like the best of of uh, moments i would say mm -hmm. yeah i'm just beginning to, to understand things i wish i'd done better back then mm -hmm. things i wish um i behaved better or acted different mm -hmm. yeah you know that, that that whole pressure of moving into new town, mm -hmm. understanding different things. So I actually lost touch with the music. Itself. And especially the fact that you were really basically settled in where. Yeah, I'm... yeah. I had lost touch with the music itself. I had to start you know, settling down again. You know, coming from a place where you had already settled down. You know, I wasn't paying no bills or nothing. Yeah. And then I moved here. I had to start from you know scratch and everything. So for so long, I lost touch with. I lost touch with the music mm -hmm. and why I was making the music. I, 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 I started making music for money. Mm -hmm. you know, it's true that at the end of the day, music has to give us one or two P's, mm -hmm. but uh, my primary reason wasn't the money, it was first the passion for it. But when you come, you, you come to this town, bro, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Everything is just what it is. Fast, you fast. Know? So you start, you, you start focusing on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And I'm only happy that I had to uh, real quick before it became worse because, man, some, you can get lost in some illusions. A lot of artists got lost yeah, in the yeah. of the part where yeah. trying to catch himself as yeah. well. But, but actually, actually, I thank God because you know um, he made everything possible. I, I I ended up catching myself, and that's how I even found you know this whole new being, this whole new self. You know that we're putting into the EP, this whole new original sound because there was something missing. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm happy to just take this you know figure and, and fit that personality and do it. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Now to the real matter I can. Engele Nyepo. Yeah. Did I pronounce it right? Engele Nyepo. Engele Nyepo. Yeah. What was it taken in? What's the reason behind that movie? Why now? Um, it's something first of all to have done since. Okay. Yeah, I have to have done since. I'm, I'm, I'm like a chief procrastinator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we had to put out this project some, since August. That was the initial plan from 2020. The plan was to put out the project in um, in August 2021. But although and Gelenepo is a, a sour phrase that translates with wait, wait for it, it yeah, in English. 
Yes. And okay. Then, and wait for it, meaning there's something coming that is called it. Okay. Yeah, it is like the main, main, that's the father of music okay. that our uh, will we'll be putting out. So okay, it's like the, the album. It's like the main album. So, okay. Yeah. So uh, we have to do the same thing. You know, like I, I want to um, put myself as a project artist. I know year should fall that I haven't put out the project. Mm. And that's what I'm trying to do with even my team right now. Okay. Like everybody that's that's Audrey to to Payne and other guys. Mm. Yeah, I'm just making sure that, you know, we are um, project people. Mm. We, we do more projects than singles. Because mm. so the I, industry has been a single yeah, worst thing yeah, for yeah. a while. We, if we want to be able to compete with the bigger industry, the Nigerians and the Ghanaians, the way we seemingly are trying to do every day on Facebook, mm. we have to actually match up their energy. These guys are project people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, uh, my guys and I were like, okay, why not just going to drop singles? Because everybody drops singles. Mm -hmm. Trying to shift out from that one, yeah. one hit, one hit chase. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Because the one hit thing is great, but it's like playing chess. Mm -hmm. You know, you are, you are, you, you're, you're just playing which the, the lock that will pick mm -hmm. whichever. But now projects, I, that's my personal thought anyway. Mm -hmm. Projects, I feel like the people take you more seriously. People take you. That's why they always say like, okay, third studio album or three, uh, four album recording artists, or, you know, stuff like that. And in the project, actually put in a lot yeah. of work, and then there is a variety, and, and then at least yeah. I can pick one or two songs which you like. But when yeah. you put out just a single, if you don't like the single, that's like yeah. fast. And here's the thing with your project. This was called a body of work. People get to understand where your mind is at musically, what sound you're trying to do, what sound you're trying to push, what are you trying to, what are you coming, you know, to the, to the what are you bringing to the table, you know. So it's why we, we did this, and this was just like a teaser for the main thing that will be coming. You know, That's why it's called I think get them here for always yeah. translate with for it. So eat so yeah. so is actually the main thing. The main thing. Eat is the eat. You know, yeah. Yeah. Album. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. The, the idea actually came from um from a movie. Okay. You know, there's a movie called Eat. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. scary. Yeah, yeah, it's a scary movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when that when that scary guy comes through you're like holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. But now I'm actually telling people like prepare your mind because it's about to get really scary and ugly. Okay. You know, in, in these parts. Okay. So that's what the whole album is is about. Amazing. Yeah. I can't wait to listen to it. So what should your listeners expect from this project? I'm talking in terms of content, context, collaboration, yeah. you know. What's this project gonna go down the history as? Um that's a, that's a nice question. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's not a very easy question to answer. Um, just expect good music. You know, it, it, it's, it's me just making music that you can listen to, that music that can relate to you on a personal level, on a spiritual level, because music for me is very personal. Yeah. More love. It's, it's love songs, it's struggle. It's, it's as real as it gets. Every story is a story. Okay. You know, we talk about, and we're talking about the ills of the society. We're talking about love and peer pressure, we're talking about money, you know, we're talking about the hustle, mm -hmm. you know. So it's it's a combination of um, reality things, as real as you can get, okay. you know, music that will remind you of at least one thing or um, one aspect of your life or a point in time that you have to go through. Yeah, because yeah. people don't really make real music now. People, uh, there's a lot of music out there that when you look at the artists and what they're telling is complete too paradox, it doesn't match, it yeah. doesn't fit. I mean, one of my missions is to, to, you know, build that bridge, you know, to create, to make music where um, an older generation and a much younger generation and those in the middle, the us, can get listen to without, you know, uh, um, um, fringing, you know, just making music that can relate to everybody and music that can be timeless because what is, that's how you, that's how you stay immortal. That. And in terms of collaborations, who who, who are you work with, you work with on this project? On this project, what was um, the what was the connection? Yeah, Why yeah. them? Now everything or everything on this project was genuine. That's why it was just a very few people. Mm -hmm. You know, from Beat Baller mm -hmm. to um, King Guns. Well, the you production part, yeah, to Phil Bill and Salatel who mm -hmm. produced as well. Mm -hmm. um, to Ren, DOD, shout out to Ren, we wrote almost all the songs together. Mm, yeah. And um, you know, there's um, Aisha, there's um, 
there's a bunch of people in there, you know, I have St. Keys playing my guitar, mm. always the Saturday. Yeah, guitar. Yeah, 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 I have Bobo on my keys, I have Big Joy, I have, you know, Blair's strings as well. So all of these people, they, 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 they understand my vision, they know what it, what it is about, or what, I, or, or what I am about. Yeah, they understand my vision. So having to work with them was easy and cool. And artist-wise, you know, I have my brother over here and my younger brother come there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that would be that would be his debut. Oh, wow. and, um, Mike Monster, we had to hard. Very kind of push I had to, to, yeah, I had to get mm-hmm. Mike on there because well, the song I featured him on there, he inspired the song. So mm-hmm. like, okay, if this guy inspires the song, it's only right for me to have him on there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, everything was all genuine. He came to the studio five minutes, uh, under twenty minutes. Sorry. He was done writing his verse and we recorded. It was not no, yo, send me the beat now. Nah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I mean, he's been in the business for a bit, so. Mean, yo, he knows his game, so. Uh, everyone else that collaborated at the album, it was really No nice. female collaboration? Um, not yet. We, okay. we, did, we, did, we did a couple of songs that um, had some fe- some female collaborations, but we we'll leave that for the, the main project. Okay. Yeah, shout out to Salakimi. She had to be on it. I discovered Salakimi. You know, from one kind of a tapes and she was yeah, amazing. Too. Yeah, yeah, John, yeah, John and Mary. Yeah, yeah, she's she's a great, she's an excellent artist. Okay. She featured in one of the songs. Unfortunately, the song the song did not make it to the LP. Okay. But yeah. it to eat. But it, it will make it to eat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah, so it, I mean, everything was 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 beautiful and, and highly um, backed by love and mutual respect. Okay. Yeah. I love the idea. Thank you. Thank you. So with uh, Rita Music, was yeah. it, is it like an 808 kind of thing? Is it a one-time collaboration? Is it a promotion kind of collaboration? Yeah. Or are you on that label now? Like, you know, yeah. you talked about being signed before, but yeah, is yeah. Rita Music like a house where you're going to go in for 360 or it's just a one-time thing? Rita Music is... Um, it's, a, it's an abstract or a subtract from 808. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when when, it, when we dissolved it away, we we came up with with Reta. Oh, so you still have your independent label? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't have an independent label. It's Reta is more of a group of people that you know that are working together to making sure that things move the way they're supposed to move. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's myself, it's many other people that are seeing many things. So it was, it's not, it's not a major label. It's not. It's not a major label, it's not a um, no minor label as well, it's just a group of people that are just doing things together. So you push a certain vision. Yeah, because the goal is to, to be able to push that cultural that cultural agenda as far as we possibly can. Yeah. And yeah, so we all came up with, you know, our Pinin Korea came up with that name. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to Pinin. <laughs> Shout out to Pinin. So yeah, it's not a label, it's just us. We 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 on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like the idea. That's amazing. So now, what's the rich plan of this project? I heard you mention when we're doing the debriefing that it's gonna drop uh, exclusively two days before. It's on every other platform on Google Play and di- yeah. and on digital. Yeah, on digital. What's the deal with that one? Oh, Are you yeah. trying to promote local or yeah. it's just business? principally? Principally, um, it drops on Eno Digital for the first two days. Yeah, Bumpy and the rest, they're, they're gonna come in on the 23rd. Okay. Yeah, why so? Because um, I want to first of all check my statistics. Mm. Yeah, see how much people we can rally up to, to you know, actually go to a different website, mm. leave their comfort zone and go to a different website to actually purchase music. Because mm. the music is free, mm. but we put in Eno Digital to actually see what we can. How is it look like? It's like a test ground, mm. yeah. And then um, also it's because I mean pushing Cameroonian content or Cameroonian platforms, mm-hmm. yeah. Putting Cameroonian platform first, mm-hmm. and then the rest of the work can get it. Mm-hmm. So you're sure. still in your texture of promoting local first before. Yeah, yeah. It's all about exporting the culture and making it because we have, I mean, bada bada, I mean, check. Obviously, you understand. Yeah. 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 So we have people. We have people paying attention. Mm-hmm. There's some people here, some outsiders paying attention. Like, okay, how would he do this? How would he do this? Mm-hmm. What would he do new? That is, oh, he do that is new. Mm-hmm. You know. So if if we put 
pushing if someone understands or someone is out there that understands that okay the main goal is first of all to push the local content mm-hmm. on the local platform okay. and then it, it, it's going to make sense i like the idea where you mentioned that it's not on sale because i i really have a, a little issue with uh, artists who decide to tax their their listeners for their music meanwhile their music is intended to heal mm-hmm. these people and help them think for the water so i mean that's 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 how we pay our bills though that's how we pay our bills because um, on N on Digital, it is one buck, which I'll probably drop down the price to 500 francs. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. um, it's one buck, basically, one K. Mm-hmm. But after that, it goes on all the other platforms for free. At the end of the day, no matter how much passion is backed by, you're going you to have to eat. You have to eat. I like it. We just need to keep you know, teaching our people how to consume our products better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I like the way you're going about uh, Angela Nepo, and I like the idea you say you're going to you know, promote local first before it goes to every other store. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it, are we going to have videos? Because we've yeah, already yeah, started yeah. with a couple. Are we going to have videos? We, we have to shoot um, last one, mm-hmm. but with the, you know, December it was an event period. Back yeah. before, and and there was a, the African Cup of Nations, too. Yeah. So um, I think we should be shooting a few songs in the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. We're already making the arrangements for all of these things to be in place because this year has to be crazy, has to be drastic. <laughs> yeah. you know, projects have to be out. The energy is pure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After we had the, the pre-listening of the yeah. and getting yeah. involved, yeah. Had, we saw yeah. you performing live for the first time at the Doma to to the one. Yeah. You know, what should we expect for people to actually fully consume and get in for and see you do it? Yeah, I mean, what I'm bringing to the table is um, a full package deal. An artist who can, you know, not only produce, write, you know, perform, but somebody who also has a band, because that's one of the things that makes an artist whole. Mm-hmm. So we're used to seeing, you know, artists doing playback and all. I'm not saying I'm not going to do some playback. But at least it has to be semi live. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to also contribute to bringing back that live performance. That culture yeah, for the yeah, like live. Yeah, exactly. Because mm-hmm. these are the things that we're missing or have been missing for a minute. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the people, the pioneers of bringing back these things in this our generation is like the Sanitarian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I want to also be in that light. So when, I mean, the, the bigger you are in terms of. Uh, human resource, the bigger your paycheck, first of all, mm-hmm. yeah. and you know the 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 more the more energy that that, that you add into the music, mm-hmm. the more connecting it is, mm-hmm. because now it's not just you performing; it's a bunch of people that you know everyone has to look out for. It's the guitar doing his thing; he sends out a different energy. Mm-hmm. It's the drummer doing his thing; he sends out a different energy. It's all of these things that we're looking at and bringing it back, you know. So one of my goals is to be one of the top performing artists mm-hmm. in, if not Cameroon, in Africa at large. Yeah. That's so, amazing. Yeah. So I love live music. Yeah, live, live music is it's live, bro. Like, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, it gets to you every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I want to brand, my, brand myself as, as the that life performer, life performer guy. So you know I, had, I had a revelation that the first music consumption was only done live. Yeah, the, the, the first recordings mm-hmm. were done live. You only had one, uh, two sides of the tape. So if you ruined your one side, you, you're left with just one side of the tape, so really expensive. So that's why the hardest working artists were back, the artists back in the day, the James Brown, the Aretha Franklin, you know. They bring you back live yeah. to culture. Yeah, the Tommy Holmes and you know, all of the, they were recording, they made sure they, they, they had a proper grasp of the music before they recorded. Mm-hmm. You know, but now we have, um, we have, we can hide behind playbacks, we can hide behind multiple takes, we can hide behind auto tunes and all of that. Mm-hmm. But music before used to be as pure and as genuine as it could possibly be. That's why in Jelen Yepo, you're going to reveal more of that, more of that, yeah, more of that live. The music itself wouldn't tell you it's live, mm-hmm. but the live performances will be, tell you that this is something. Amazing. Yeah. And get a new pop. Yeah. Um, we yeah, are still waiting for, for it. For it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Last year we lost one of Cameroon's finest talents in yeah. very flexible manner. I'm talking about uh, uh, I call him a legend already, Fish. Yeah. And the manner in which he went, what what is example do you think that sets for the next generation? And what do you have as an advice for that next generation or even those in this generation? 
Bro, it's easy, man. Just hold God close. Yeah, hold God close. Like, just hold God close, man. And read your Bible, grow your spiritual health. Mm. Yeah, understand the power that is in um, spirituality and how heavy our physical lives that we are, are backed by mm. this, this, this certain power, certain force, mm. certain celestial force. Yeah, most of us, we ignore these things and it's always when um, something happens that we start running to church or to our moms to pray for us and things. I think people to get drunk by the spotlight too much that they forget that this is real life and you have to focus on what's real and forget about the show sometimes and just stay real. Yeah, I've been in that spot. Sometimes it's good to reconnect, you know, to just take a pause and because this whole thing is consuming, it's it's spiritually consuming Mm -hmm. because you have to, you be, you, you, you drop a little bit of you everywhere you go and you take a little bit of everyone every time you visit their joints. Mm-hmm. But if you're not strong, if you're not, um, if you're not firm, you know, on God, you know, you can shake or go off balance. But when, you, when you're firm on God, you don't move, you're, 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 you're certain, mm-hmm. you know. So most people should just hold on to God, especially the, the kids coming out that they think showbiz or this musical milieu. It's some. Um, it's not three ground. Mm-hmm. You know, this is business. It's, it's, it's in as much as we're back by passion, but it's business. It's a place where it's a very dangerous field mm-hmm. if you're not prepared for so many things. And mm-hmm. most kids come in and they go astray or they have issues mm-hmm. because they're not prepared. You know. Happy to fish though. Yeah, I. I Sad I, loss. Yeah, I wasn't. I, I wasn't close to fish. It was my boy. I wasn't that close to fish at all. We spoke a few times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I was a fan of his music. He was an amazing talent. Yeah, he was. An, I, I, I have watched him perform almost every time. There was an event. I would make sure, I, as long as I know Fish is performing, I'll make sure I go for that event too. And he brought this whole new energy on stage. He came in with this whole dance vibe, this way of dressing. Shout he was coming in. He was coming in. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. You know, but I, I respect the guy. We have not been close to him. I've not had any, you know, friendship or anything with him, but I respect the guy. Mm-hmm. And why I would not say I respected the guy, I respect him because he lives on his music with the forever live on. So I still respect him. And um, I'm only sending love and blessings to his family at times like this because it's so, crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, crazy. guys. This, we were, it was an amazing chat, ladies and gentlemen. We're here with Masango AD. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. again, you have four jobs in a couple of days. I hope every one of you watching this now runs it like it's mad happy, you know? Yes, sir. Anytime you want to come back, yes, you know sir. where to find us, my Thanks brother. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Stay tuned. All love.